For sure. Um, you know, first of all, just congratulations to our men's and women's basketball teams on, on reaching the NCAA tournament. Very happy for those programs. Uh, good luck to Buzz and Joni as they go um, battle what's not lost on the irony of taking on Nebraska uh, in the NCAA tournament. Um, and then from our perspective, just excited for spring ball, you know, excited for this opportunity, excited to get out on the grass. Uh, you do so many things when you take over a program, but really we all want to coach football, you know, and now finally we're, we're here. We're at that moment where we get to get out on the grass and, and start to kind of build this program into what we want it to become. Uh, I also think with spring ball nowadays, there's a much bigger emphasis on uh, getting your fundamentals built, getting the, the core values of your program built, because with the way the rules have changed, you know, we get about 80% of our practices in the spring in full pads. We only get about a third of them in fall camp now. And so, you know, what we get done, what we get accomplished in spring is going to be critical for, for how we create our success for the season. I think, you know, what we're trying to get done, we're trying to develop, obviously, a fundamental base of how we want to play the game. I think we've got to get schematically our guys comfortable with our schemes, offense, defense, special teams, and start to build that so that they've got a really good knowledge base heading out of spring into summer, into fall camp. Uh, and I just think across the board as a program, we want to focus on developing our football IQ. I think we've got to become a smarter, more intelligent football program. And then the last thing that I'll just add is a couple injury updates just so you guys have these for the guys that are out at practice, uh, guys that are – going to be extremely limited, if not out this spring. Uh, Cam Dewberry, Shamar Turner, uh, Aki, Eni White, and Donovan Green, just all recovering from off-season stuff that happened during the season. Uh, nothing that we anticipate going into the summer. Those guys will be out there uh, participating as much as they can, but will be extremely limited and not involved in a lot of scrimmages and team activity. And then one incoming freshman, Kendall Jackson, is dealing with uh, a, a problem that he had to get fixed from high school, and so he'll be very limited through spring too. And so um, excited, excited for this opportunity, excited to get out there and, and coach football again and do the things that we love to do, uh, watch these guys kind of took what they did this winter uh, and watch it pay off on the field. And so from there, I'll kind of open it up to questions. To the left, Cease. Good, good housekeeping. I was going to ask you about, about the injury update, <laughs> but what about Foster as far as track? How much, you know, what spring deals with him? Yeah, he's track. To the left, Rob. Howdy, Coach. Howdy. So um, several folks um, that, that maybe played for you before – but are, are moving on, have talked about how the program is more disciplined and there's more accountability. Um, and, and they've said that that's a great thing. That's something that this program needed. How do you kind of navigate that when, when, when trying to, to install that into a program with existing players and, and recruits coming in? And, and you got some players that may not like that. They, they might not, they like to get coached hard with the, the portal after, you know, coming after? How, how do you kind of navigate that? Yeah, I, I, I still believe we have a responsibility to develop young people as men uh, and prepare them for everything that's coming at them in life. And, and um, I said this to our guys. I've said this since the portal opened. I was no different when I was here last, last time. Um, it, the expectations aren't challenging. What we're asking isn't hard. Uh, we want people to be where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. That's a life skill. Uh, and if, if we can't instill that in our kids, then we're failing them. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And so, um, you know, we have very few, if any, problems in our program with that. I, I don't think there's very many people, when it's presented the way it's presented, and it's explained the way it's explained. Um, we don't care about a lot of things. Uh, I don't care earrings, hats, bandanas, do-rags, how they dress, what they do. Just, we want people in our program to be where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. That's real simple. I just think that's a life skill. Down front right, Carter. Hey, Mike. Uh, wanted to ask about uh, Connor and just how he's recovered from his injury. Yeah, <laughs> so still battling. Um, he'll be out there uh, practicing. Um, I don't think he's exactly 
where he'd like to be um, long term. Uh, not that he's behind or anything or hasn't done what he's supposed to do or there's concerns. I just I think obviously he would like to be a little bit healthier. Uh, he'll be able to, to work efficiently as a pocket passer. Uh, I don't know how well he'll be able to truly run around yet. Um, he still hasn't quite been fully out there doing agility work and those types of things. And so, um, you know, but it's important for us to get him out there and get him integrated in the system. And, you know, obviously, listen, we've had, um, you know, Connor's, Connor's going to go into spring as the number one guy, but uh, we've also had two other quarterbacks play very effectively. Um, you know, Jalen Henderson at the end of the season and then Marcel Reed in the bowl game. And so, um, you know, like every position across the board, there's competition this spring and Connor certainly needs to be out there and be part of it. You mentioned uh, focus on fundamentals in the spring. I'm wondering when you have so many newcomers from portal and, and early enrollees, does that change uh, how you approach things and, and just how much more competition do you think this spring will have compared to most springs? Yeah, you know, it's funny. We talked about that on Monday as a team. Uh, you know, healthy competition is what creates growth in everyone, in every organization, everywhere you are, right? The, the idea that uh, I'm a little nervous that if I don't do it to my best ability, somebody might get to do it for me, uh, I think is some sort of motivational factor for everyone, not just our players, literally everyone in life. And so um, I think it's natural when you're new and it's a new staff for it to feel as though every job is open and, and is open for competition. I think even as we build this program to where we want it to go, and, and we did this you know, in year two at Duke, you know, every job needs to be open every spring. And, and it has to feel that way. Uh, and it has to be real competition or else it's really, you're not getting the growth within your program that you need to have. And so, you know, we want our guys to go out there and compete. We want nobody to be settled in the role that they're in. We don't want anybody to just go, oh yeah, I'm a backup, that's cool. Like, because I don't think you get better um, as a program, as an individual, as a unit, as a team, if that's the mindset. And so, you know, and that's on us as coaches to, to create those opportunities. If we roll out the same starting 11 for 15 straight practices, then, then we're not creating competition. And so, um, you know, I know from my time here in the past how much everybody loves to write depth chart stuff. Um, you will not be able to figure out this depth chart. I can promise you that. It'll be all over the place all spring uh, as we try to figure out who the best 11 players are and what roles people are going to have moving into the summer. Coach, we'll go back behind the lights to Nicole yeah. and then to Cease. Coach, just how beneficial is spring practice in your first season? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's critical always. I think right now, you know, <laughs> we've got a race against the clock, you know, and I think the way the way we're looking at it and talking to our guys is, you know, Notre Dame has been a program that's been established for three years. Uh, we're all aware that's the opener. Uh, and so we're playing catch up, not only just in this season, but for three years worth of a program. And so, you know, we can't waste days, we can't miss opportunities, we can't maximize, can't not maximize everything that we're doing to try to build this thing to what it needs to be. And, um, you know, we have a really clear plan. I think the kids understand it in terms of what we're trying to do, how we're trying to get it accomplished. We've got to go out and we've got to really, really drive it forward this spring. And, and you know, and then just with it being the first spring, you know, <laughs> Everything is challenging. You know, we're going to have a meeting today to talk about like where the running backs go during individual, um, or how we transition from a team period because nobody's practiced with Coach Elko ever before, right? And so it's the first time that we're going to go out and actually function in a practice. And so, you know, before you even get to which we have to schemes and all of that stuff, you know, we've got to get from stretch lines to individual to all of those periods too, right? And so you've got to just build this whole thing in terms of how we practice. And so that's important. And then just what do you make of the two events happening at Kyle Field this summer with George Strait and the, Mex the Mexico and Brazil game? Yeah, not much because, again, I, I stay in my lane. But, um, you know, obviously, listen, you've got a, an enormous uh, soccer match, which I'm sure is going to bring in an awful 
lot of people. Um, I, am a, I am a closet soccer fan, and so very familiar with those two national teams and the magnitude of that game as it heads into Copa America and what they're warming up for. And then, and then listen, George Strait's an absolute legend. And so the fact that he's coming to do the first ever concert at Kyle Field, you know, who else would it be? Uh, to do the first ever concert in Kyle Field. And so I, I think it's exciting. I think those are great opportunities for our university um, to create brand exposure for who we are. Front left, Cease. Speaking of schemes, uh, you're going to be followed by your coordinators, and thanks for making your coordinators available to us. But what kind of schemes can we expect from the defense and the offense, and particularly the offense coming from Kansas State? Is that going to be a little bit like the Kansas State offense at Klein ran there. Just what about your two schemes? Yeah, this and this I think is probably a great time to have this conversation because you'll get tired of me saying it as we move forward together. But, you know, schemes are so overblown in terms of what they actually are and mean. So what do I mean by that? You know, we run a 4-2-5 on defense. There's probably 50 programs in the country that run a 4-2-5 on defense. If you went to any of the 50, they wouldn't have any carryover. Like, and so what we do is different than this school's 425 is different. Than, like, there's, there's no way to put schemes into these tight, neat little packages for the media that everybody wants them to be in. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just a reality of football. And so, um, you know, we talk more about core values and what we want it to look like. So, so we spend time on philosophically, defensively, what do we want to be? We want to be a group that can attack. We want to be a group that can dictate to the offense. We want to be a group that tackles well, plays extremely physical, communicates at a high level, doesn't give anything away, forces the offense to earn everything. Uh, offensively, we want to be multiple. We want to be a group that can switch tempo. We want to be a group that can attack a defense, can feature our playmakers, can move people around to create the matchups that we want to create in order to be successful. Um, that's how we talk about scheme. Um, you know, everybody wants it to be, you know, are you going to spread or are you a power? Everybody wants it to fall into these neat little tied up bow packages. I just don't think that's the reality of it. And so uh, as we try to develop this honest relationship as we go through this, um, I just think that's the reality of what it is. And so, you know, obviously, you know, we're going to put those coordinators in front of you so that you can ask the specific questions of them that you want to ask and not because I'm deferring or deflecting. But, you know, when we talk in terms of, okay, hey, we're going to go hire an offensive coordinator, what are we looking for? I'm not looking for a guy that runs a certain style of offense. I'm looking for a guy who understands how to use our personnel, how to match people up, how to attack a defense, how to effectively move the football um, year to year, not just when we have the best talent in the world. Right side, Donna. Coach, with the finite time or limited time that you have for spring ball, how important is it during the practices and any time that you have with the team to try and kind of galvanize the locker room and, and with this new group being together for the first time, um, you know, getting them to build that camaraderie and, and team relationship. Yeah, I mean, I think that part we've been able to start already. I think, I think when you start talking about building connection, building culture, building togetherness, you know, you don't always have to be on the practice field to do some of those things. And so, uh, you know, just – having meals together, uh, having coaches be at meals together, sitting with each other, putting the phone down and having conversations with each other more often, you know, doing some intentional things to just bring this thing together a lot more, I, I think is something that, that we've tried to do. Um, now I think it's, it's about taking that to the next step, which is healthy competition, right? Which is how do you go out there against each other, play as hard as you can, compete for jobs, uh, compete for spots, uh, compete at the at most highest level, but keep each other safe, healthy, do it the right way. Uh, I think that's kind of now the next part of this thing is, is learning how to like really attack each other and respect each other at the same time. And I think that's a really fine line that you walk when you're building a really good program. And so I think that's kind of the next phase. And then I think there's a level of cohesiveness that you've got to build on the field, right? And, and that's 
you know, as much about relationship, but also just about getting to know each other, right? When, when you're in a system together for four years, there's this feeling of like, I kind of know where you're going to be. You know, Connor's run this play with a wide receiver this many times and is really comfortable with it, right? And, and every play we run Friday will be a play run for the first time. And so how you build that volume of repetition to get comfortable with each other, I think is, is something that does have to happen on the football field. And as a fellow Central Jersey native, is it Taylor Ham or Pork Roll? It's, it's, it's turkey is really what it is. It's not Taylor Ham or Pork Roll. I'm going sliced turkey. <laughs> Go to left side, Luke from the battalion. Coach, can you talk about uh, the workouts that we've seen the team doing uh, this spring as well? How big is that to getting the coaches and the players acclimated with each other, especially the transfers of a new coach is brought in? Yeah, I, you know, listen, there's, there's, um, you know, we talk about the off season. We, we try to make everything game like in our program, and I think we talk about the off season as a four quarter game, and and so the first quarter of that is winter conditioning, and and there's different phases of that. Obviously, there's a part that is is heavy with Coach Moffitt and his staff in the weight room and developing strength and mass and all of those types of things. But then there's a part of it that is is us out there as a staff with them doing some of the drill work, doing some of the agility work, um, taking advantage of the opportunities that we're allowed to be out there with them. And um, I think that just builds all kinds of things. It builds comfortability with us as a staff. It builds um, – like one of the things that we're trying to do a really good job of is, is creating personal relationships outside of your own position group, right? And so, you know, to have the running back coach or the wide receiver coach be out there coaching a DB um, is, is something that I think is good for our program. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, nobody has players. We have players. You know, it's not the O-line coach. Is, his players are the O-line. You know, we all coach Texas A&M football. And I think all of that stuff is, is really important, too. And so, um, yeah, I think you build a lot of different things in that winter workout period. And now, you know, in our mind, we're transitioning to the second quarter, which is spring practice. Um, and so now it's, it's kind of shifting gears. But we've already been out there a lot with them. They know our personalities. We've coached them a bunch. And I think that helps moving forward. And then I know you're speaking at the big event this Saturday. Is that your first experience with that? And then kind of I know the team is going to be doing some stuff as well. And how big is that to have them out there? Yeah, I mean, obviously, listen, that's something that's really important to the tradition of Texas A&M. And, and obviously, we have a, have a strong feeling about the role we play in the Bryan College Station community and, and how we represent ourselves in that community is really important. And so, uh, you know, to me, it's an honor to be asked to speak at it. Uh, I certainly jumped at the opportunity to get out there and address the group as we get started. And then uh, our team will play a huge role. We actually have practice. Um, during the day and then uh, Saturday evening, our team's going to jump out there for a few hours and get involved and pitch it in and help in. And, and, you know, unfortunately, as a staff, we won't get to get involved too much because there's too many recruits going <laughs> around here on the weekends. But, um, you know, we'd love the opportunity at some point for us as a staff to be able to be involved in that as well. To the left, Alex, and then Carter, you'll wrap us up. We've got Coach Klein ready. Hey, Mike. Uh, offensive line was a unit that kind of had some struggles last year on this team. And so, just what have you seen from that group through the offseason and what you want to see from them trying to take a step forward, knowing how critical a, a unit like that is to success in the SEC? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the first thing is 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 there's got to be a, a way that we play the football game. And, and um, there's, a, there's a, a mentality that you want to have as a program, and a lot of that starts with your offensive line, uh, you know, the grit, the toughness, the mental edge, the way you can control a football game. Um, when your offensive line can do those things, it's, it just creates a certain mentality amongst your program. Um, that's something that we have to develop. I think that the process, the conversations about it have already started. The understanding that that's an area that needs to improve has already taken place uh, in terms of, of can we improve to the level we need to. We'll, we'll start that process on Friday and kind of see where it goes. And obviously, um, you know, again, opening up competition, uh, making sure that, that we evaluate everybody in that room and try to find the best people we can to put out on the field to be successful. And then when you were here as defensive coordinator, you were still pretty hands-on with the position group when y'all were out there at 
like individual drills are, are you still pretty hands-on even though you're head coach now um yeah so so it's interesting I'm I'm <laughs> I think my coaches would tell you I'm hands-on from an oversight standpoint I don't obviously I don't run position meetings I don't I don't have a group that's specifically mine um I, I do think I'm very involved in what we're doing in every phase of the program offense defense and special teams I um you know I will bounce around at practice uh I will be on both sides of the field I'll be on offense and defense um, there's different parts of practice that I enjoy being around and being part of. And then, you know, my job is my job as a head coach is to make sure that the overall presentation of how we practice looks right. You know, how we transition from drill to drill, how organized we look, how fast we're moving. Um, are we organized with our drill work? Are we doing the right things? You know, I have to kind of step out of and, and did this for the last few years, have to step out of the you know, just being the safeties coach or just being and, and really make sure that everything is functioning at the level it needs to. But uh, I'm sure if you ask Coach Ish, our safeties coach, he would tell you that um, it doesn't take much to get me back involved in that room. <laughs> Carter, you'll wrap us up. Uh, Mike, I just wanted to ask about the uh, perch software you guys use as a strength and conditioning program. I know uh, Jeremy Jacobs, I think, brought it to you guys at Duke and Moffitt wanted to bring it to you guys here and um, just the benefits that, that come from getting all that data and applying it in real time and things like that. Yeah, so so we actually, we had it at Duke. Uh, when we got to Duke, we didn't maybe, I don't know how it was utilized previously. We utilized it tremendously. We did not have it here. Um, and it was something that we added in the off season when we got here. Uh, it, basically, it's, it's, you know, velocity-based training in the weight room. And I think it's it's part of, Part of how you're training your body, you know, you can't always just move massive weight, right? There's times where you have to, but uh, in order to get bigger, faster, stronger in a way that that kind of is healthy and smart, um, Perch creates a way to, to kind of do velocity-based training where you can kind of monitor how you're moving it, right? And so, uh, you know, some kids can bench 400 pounds, some kids can bench 300 pounds at a faster rate right and that's creating and developing football specific explosiveness in your program and so i think uh, some of those things i just think are really important and i think it goes back a little bit to you know why coach moffett was the guy that we we focused on was because you know we talked about this i think in one of the other press conferences there is an integrated sports science in the program that we run, right? There's the old school toughness that you need and, and some of those things, but there is a very science-based program that we're running. And then obviously one of the reasons why we brought Jeremy over here uh, from Duke is because he's heavily involved in, in how we've done things as, as, a, as a football program and is helpful in type of bridging those gaps with Coach Moffitt in terms of how we want to do things as a program. Uh, combining it with what Coach Moffitt wants to do and, and how it all comes together. And so sometimes having a guy that, you know, worked for Coach Moffitt at LSU, worked for me at Duke, and is now working for me and Coach Moffitt, it's, it's a great bridge to have someone who can kind of link us both together in a, in a way to get it going where it needs to. Coach, appreciate your time. Yeah, awesome. Thank Coach you, guys. Look forward to seeing you this spring.